Hello, everybody. First and foremost, a uh, sincere thank you for the organizers and uh, editing team of entrepreneur.com for having me here. This is my first time in India. Uh, I'm very excited. I had a little tool around and I'm also very excited to present you the opportunities of actually your own country because I've done a little bit of um, background research and it's the metaverse as the previous speaker said is very, very promising. You saw the, you know, uh, virtual engagement, virtual worlds, lots of fun stuff. And today I want to talk about building bridges. Because for me, Metaverse does not exist without Web3. Web3 for me is the fundamental base. The token economy is the fundamental base of the Metaverse. But before I jump in, I would like to tell a little bit more about myself because I'm here to present you opportunities and to tell you that Metaverse and Web3 is a super dynamic space you can build whatever you want, and my personal career and my personal journey um, is a fireproof to that. I joined blockchain. I, got, I have a background in um, urban planning and policy design. I worked in consultancy, uh, launched several companies. I worked with luxury, with enterprise, with railways, with smart cities, you name it. Uh, you know, in consulting, you often touch many industries. And during the DeFi summer of 2020, I happened to be living in London. Originally, I'm Russian. Um, I got a degree in architecture there. Then I moved to Italy to do my master degree. And then I moved to London to sort of launch my entrepreneurial journal journey and, you know, test myself. Um, currently, I live in Spain, between Spain and UAE this year, as COP28 is happening in the UAE. Uh, and I tend to work a lot in the sustainability and currently I work with United Nations, UNESCO uh, and governments. So three years ago, during summer 2020, I, I found myself in London in the lockdown. Um, like everybody sort of lost, like what's going on? Where's the world gonna go? Everybody was looking for the digital transformation. Uh, and then one space was booming incredibly fast. They were talking, launching, companies launching, and I came across Polkadot ecosystem. And I joined right away as an ambassador. Guess what I found there? The most incredible, welcoming, knowledgeable community. Community that helped me in my journey to the metaverse and to the Web3. I began connecting with people, learning, building partnerships, establishing um, relationships. A year later, I joined an NFT parachain on Polkadot, and we launched successfully two parachains, one on Kusama, one on Polkadot. I won't bore you with the Polkadot ecosystem because this is probably the most complicated blockchain ecosystem, but it's really worthwhile exploring. So please, if you have questions, reach me out after this presentation. So why am I talking about, um, you know, as an urban planner, um, I like to talk about megatrends. We live in a changing world right now. We live in a world of opportunities where tables are changing, where power relationships are shifting, and the two sectors that are being disrupted the most is finance. You know, in 2020, IMF announced that we need a Bretton Woods moment, and in 2022, India surpassed UK economy. Why is that happening? Well, let's look at the 2,000 years of global GDP. You can see that India and China were the leading country for the most of our history as humankind. And right now, you know, Mark Twain said that history does not repeat itself, but it tends to um, rhyme. <laughs> uh, and this is what is happening right now. India is growing incredibly fast. Young people, talent, generations that is taking over. And this is a historical opportunity um, to explore also the growth of the metaverse and Web3. Where are we currently in the Web3? And why I believe that there is an opportunity and the risk is diminishing uh, in this exact moment because Three years ago, we were in that smaller chasm and 
there was mostly opportunities for blockchain developers. The community was extremely focused on the core infrastructure development, launching different blockchains, Ethereum, Tezos, uh, Polkadot, Binance, you name it. So all of that was a high risk. Bitcoin, right? Innovation. Nobody really knew, is it going to take off? Do we gonna, you know, are we gonna face adoption of this technology? But what is happening three years later? Only three years later, this is an extremely rapid growth. We have all the infrastructure in place. When I joined Polkadot, there wasn't a single parachain live. Now there are over 30 projects ready to host applications. So now we are in that still big scary chasm. But now is the moment for entrepreneurs, marketers, educators to jump in and explore this land of opportunities. I also said at the beginning that Web3 and tokenization is one of the most important elements of the metaverse, is the basement, base of it. As an architect, you know, you build a building, if you don't have a proper base, your building will not last long. So decentralization and tokens is very, very important for any virtual world, for any community to explore. But are we yet there? That is a big question. The opportunity size, the World Economic Forum estimates that up to 10% of global GDP will be transacted by ledgers by 2027. That's the next five years. And tokenized markets will reach 24 trillion US dollars by 2027. However, there's a little obstacle there. If we talk about industries like real estate, traditional art markets, or carbon credits, we will face obstacles by the holders or by the founders of these industries, we will find resistance. For example, at COP27, um, companies that um, accredit carbon credits forbid tokenization of carbon credits. So for now, carbon credits that are available to large corporations to purchase are not available to be purchased via tokens. Um, that is a big obstacle because that slows down democratization of such an important market as carbon credits. However, we're still hopeful that there, there will be startups and innovation. And another important element, right, the layer on top of the Web3 is the metaverse. And by 2030, the expected growth is 5 trillion US dollars. And the investment in the metaverse in this recent years, by 2022, I have the data that it reached already $120 billion. But the most important question, because I work with startups and with enterprise, and I was asked today to present, you know, to speak on the behalf of um, startups. But the truth is that every enterprise that enters this world of Web3 becomes a startup because we deal with so many unknown parameters um, with so much experimentation. We're still on a journey, everyone, every one of us working in Web3 of discovering our customer. And trust me, no one still knows who the customer is. There is still a lot to be explored and this is the most exciting journey. Second big question that companies need to ask themselves is where is the value? Because when we talk about blockchain companies, blockchain ecosystems, uh, what you often hear is developers' conversations like, well, my blockchain is better than yours. Our blockchain solution will fit your business way better. Um, sometimes there are very uh, factual parameters, but Nobody knows your business better than you. And the point is not to be the best blockchain of the world. The point is to find your customer and discover your real value, the value that you are delivering to your customer. And this can only be done in collaboration, in conversation, sitting at the table, 
where you have blockchain development company, infrastructure, uh, web layer developers, front-end developers, virtual world developers, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, token experts, finance experts, legal experts. So there is so much that we still need to discuss for every single use case. And the one big and important element on which I want to focus today is communities. So when I'm asked, okay, so where is my opportunity? How do I launch my product on the market? What should be my product? I always tell companies I work with, focus on your communities. Study your communities before you launch the virtual world, before you go into building a hardware, VR headset, any technology, you name it. I'll give you an example. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be the, the, the bad guy in the room today. Um, for example, European Union launched the metaverse. It invested half a, half a million euro into building this metaverse. Nobody showed up at the opening. Why is that? Well, because it's not enough to build a metaverse. You need to have people into it. You need to have people wanting to be there, having engagement, using it, having utility there. Early metaverse development began with the artworks, empowering creators, um, hanging paintings on the virtual worlds uh, of different virtual spaces, building galleries. And that was, that those were the first steps. Then we saw big brands jumping in, building offices in the metaverse. Later on, we saw big companies like um, enterprises using it for tracking uh, goods, uh, for uh, verifying identities, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so communities became really an important part. And the more you, some brands, um, the case study I want to focus today of how I believe um, this case study is one of the best on the market. It's been launched fairly recently. And I show it as a success story, even though we don't know, there is no direct mention of Web3 um, or Metaverse in this campaign. But this is very interesting case to look at. So Louis Vuitton launched a campaign uh, with Kusama, artist, and they did it in a very interesting way. So they created an application, and they created a physical space in their stores um, in some cities like Paris, New York, and London. They've created a journey that you can follow with the virtual reality. And for everybody else who cannot visit the physical location, they've created an application where you can play in the game the game is designed, the, all the objects there, they're designed by the artist Kusama. Uh, her recognizable polka dot and Kusama pattern, probably I've picked up this use case because it resonates with my blockchain ecosystem. And they make you comp complete quests, very short games. Every game takes about 30 seconds to complete. You plant seeds, you water the seeds, at the end you get complete the set, collect your collectible, so they call it a collectible, and then you can view it in, uh, in an augmented reality. What is very interesting about this application? The legal side of it. They do not promise you to maintain this application. They warn you that this is a test. They don't know if it's gonna work or if it's not gonna work, and they ask you to share your data. They ask you, if they can collect your feedback on how you use this application. This is a very good way to engage with your community. It's good for the startups because as a startup, you definitely don't know who your customer is because you're just testing the market. And often startups led by developers teams, by technical people, uh, they tend to just build a product for themselves because they're having a blast building a product and they just launched it on their market and they say, well, build it, they will come, meaning customers and users. It's not always the case. So in this case, you can also have an engagement um, 
in the augmented reality, you can plant a seed. I just planted one in the hall of Hilton yesterday to, to show you that you can, you know, have this entertainment. You can use it for your store. You can use it for your office. You can use it to showcase your product, the digital twin, et cetera, et cetera. You can decorate the cities, the smart cities, to test things out. And you can play games. You can showcase products, like an actual product. So this is a big boost for the commerce. And then how you can go on with that, you know, when you already know that your customer perceives that this is a good value for them, they are enjoying your application and solution, you can jump into offering them an NFT and Web3 and actually tokenizing their digital asset, you can attach their, the physical asset to it and you can put it on a marketplace. So First Deeps is a good example of Web2 slash Web3 Web e-commerce Web3 marketplace, because you can buy a digital painting plus a physical painting plus mint a token right away. To build a solution like this, from my personal experience, takes two weeks of development. The rest is marketing.